watch and wait for Christ's coming. Light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. Remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light the first candle in hope. We light the second candle for peace. And we light the third candle in joy. Rejoice, for our Lord is coming into the darkness of a person's exile to lead us. Home as we hear in Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry lands shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly. And rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning hand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fool, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Let us pray. Lord, our Redeemer, who lead us from languishing in sorrow's shadows, into laughter's joy over your abundant restoration. Thank you that you are coming for us. Lead us home along your way. Jesus Christ, amen. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord.
Please be seated. The God of light shines into our hearts the desire to be at one with God. As we make our confession of sin, may it be so. Let us pray. God of the future, you are coming in power to bring all nations under your rule. We confess that we have not expected your kingdom, for we live casual lives, ignoring your promised judgment. We accept lies as truth, exploit neighbors, abuse the earth, and refuse your justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your way and to seek things that will endure when Christ comes to judge the world. Watch, wait. God is bringing to you new hope and peace. It is a gift given especially for you, one that you cannot earn. It's a gift. Praise be to the giver of all great gifts, our Lord. Amen. And now, having been made at one with, e with God through Christ, we are made at one with each other through the passing of the peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please greet one another with signs of peace. Please be seated. I would remind you that this is the time to please pass the pew pads and sign in if you haven't already. And we have an announcement from Jack Gadsby about the Christmas trees. Go ahead, Jack.
We do have uh, more, 50 percent more candy than we had last year. So our goal is to pass, last year we passed out uh, 17 pieces in each bag. This year we hope to do more. So if we're looking forward to doing this and we ask that you perhaps ask your neighbor or someone that isn't associated with another church to come and receive a Christmas treat from the Lee Green adult class. So, next Sunday, we hope to see you all here, plus more. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. I would share with you that Kelly Evans had her hip replacement surgery this Wednesday, and it went well. She is at home, and that we need to be in prayer for her recovery as well as for Tanya Zahn, who's going to be having her second knee replaced on Tuesday. So she's starting over again. So Tanya, we, we wish you many blessings. I would share with you that Gary Gustafson has taken a turn for the worse, and he is hour to hour at this time, and ask your prayers for him and for Penny. And I would remind you that the children's choirs will be singing and the bell choir will be playing next Sunday morning. So I, just to piggyback on Jack, uh, be sure to come and invite others to come with you. Are there any other announcements, um, ministries of the church or? Just a brief one. I want to thank everybody that was part of Hanging in the Green Please, you see this tree, you should see the tree in the social hall. It's the biggest we've ever had. So many people decorated. We are so grateful for your help. And it was a, it was a great time on Wednesday night. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And thank you to everyone who did help in that endeavor. It looks beautiful. So, are there anything, other things to share? In that case, let us join our hearts and minds together and offer prayer on behalf of all God's people. Merciful friend, we bend our wills to yours so that in our prayers and deeds, we may be a lively part of the fulfillment of your word. We call to mind those whose hands seem weak and shaky, the sick and the palsied, the weary and the timid, the sorely tempted and the guilty. God of promises, by your grace, strengthen the weak hands. We call to mind those whose trembling legs seem unable to bear the load the aged and the infirm, the oppressed and those threatened with violence. God of promises, come to your people and steady the trembling knees. We call to mind those who are filled with consternation or fear, the wrongly accused or the abused, the refugee or the victims of war. God of promises, say those of fearful, save those of fearful heart, and say to them, Fear not, I am with you. We call to mind those who are blind, both those whose sight is physically impaired and those who have excellent vision but can't seem to see things that really matter. God of promises, Today, let the eyes of the blind be opened. We call to mind those who are deaf, the many who live wonderful lives, and for those who have keen hearing but remain deaf to truth and wisdom. God of promises, 
Today let the ears of the deaf be unsealed. We call to mind those without the use of their legs. <clears throat> Victims of birth defects or accidents. The frail and the diseased. Some bedridden and many in wheelchairs. God of promises be with the lame that they may leap like the deer. We call to mind the affliction of the dumb the many who are mute, some tongue-tied, and some who, because of painful shyness, rarely speak. God of promises, loosen the tongue of the deaf that they may sing for joy. O you who are tireless and persistent love, please continue your deeds of mercy to all people everywhere. With the assistance of your church and with the help of all people of goodwill, may the shadows of darkness and pain be driven back and all people live in the joy of your marvelous light. We pray this and all the hidden prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving God, we who are of patchy faith must rank among the least in the kingdom of heaven. Yet we turn to the coming of your Christ with unfettered joy. He comes to us not to criticize, but to mend, not to exploit, but to fulfill. We, the blind, lame, diseased, deaf, and the dead, look to his advent with thanksgiving. Through the reading and hearing of your word, make us ready whenever he comes among us. True joy of loving hearts. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning continues in the gospel of Matthew in the 11th chapter, verses 2 through 11. Listen for God's word to you. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite the children to come and join me down front. Good morning. Just a few today. That's okay. There's plenty here. Oh, here we go. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning. What's the desert like? Do you know what the desert is like, Josiah? It's hot. Yes. What else is it like, Ella? It has no water. No water. What else is it like, Cash? Sandy. Sandy. Those are all exactly right. The desert isn't a good place to grow things to eat, is it? It's not a good place to grow flowers, is it? No. But guess what? Our scripture this morning says that the desert is going to be glad and rejoice and blossom abundantly. Do you know what abundantly is? Abundantly is lots, huge amounts. That's abundantly. Lots and lots and lots and lots. And that's how the desert's going to be someday when God makes the way ready for the people to go home. They're out in in a prison right now, and they're going to come home someday, 
and God is going to make it so that there's plenty to eat and beautiful flowers to look at all the way home. And God's going to build a highway in the middle of the desert. You know how hard it is to walk on the beach in the sand? That's not very easy going, is it? No. But God's going to build a big, tall highway out of nice pavement, just like any road. And it's going to be easy to walk on for even the people who have trouble walking. Yeah, we know people who have trouble walking. Sometimes I do. My knees can be bad. Yes. And that's a good thing. Oh, here we go. One more. Okay. So I wanted you to have that picture in your mind of what the desert is going to turn into when God makes the way for us all to go home and be with God forever. Isn't that a neat thing? Yes. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us. And for making our way easy. for making our way easy. And beautiful. And beautiful. And full of good food. And full of good food. Amen. Thank you, and you can go. Miss Erin is going to be teaching today. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The third Sunday in Advent is known as Gaudete Sunday, which is Latin for rejoice. It's Rejoice Sunday today. If you use a purple candle set in an Advent wreath, as has been traditional, today is the day you would light the pink or rose-colored one for a lightening of the mood and a reason to rejoice. The Isaiah text says, The wilderness and dry land shall be glad, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom. But what about the gospel lesson? Where's the joy in our gospel lesson today? John the Baptist is in prison, and he has been since chapter 4 of this gospel. Seven long chapters. John is in prison to Herod. Debbie Thomas writes, Joy is not evident here behind the bars that hold the fiery baptizer. Imprisoned for speaking the hard truth to Herod, John is in chains and in crisis, wondering if he has staked his life on the wrong promise and the wrong person. The Messiah, as far as John can tell, has changed nothing. He was supposed to make the world new. He was supposed to bring justice, fairness, and order to human institutions such that a a tyrant like Herod would no longer sit on the throne and a righteous man like John would no longer languish in a rat-infested prison. Jesus was supposed to finish the costly work John started so boldly in the wilderness to wield the axe, bring the fire, renew the world. But nothing has worked out the way John has anticipated it would, and he's left pacing in his cell, wondering if he has backed the wrong cause, the wrong man. 
So he sends to his cousin Jesus and asks, Are you the one who is to come? Or are, you, are we to wait for another? Does this surprise you? The, is this crisis of faith something you would expect from John the Baptist? I certainly don't. After all, he leapt for joy in his mother's womb when she first saw the pregnant Mary. His fiery preaching in the wilderness brought people to repentance. He saw the Holy Spirit descend like a dove on Jesus at his baptism. And now from the freedom of the wilderness, John is in another enclosure, much more dire than his mother's womb. Jan Richardson reminds us that from this enclosure, John will face a grisly death. But for now, he is still at work, discerning at full speed. The one called the messenger is still receiving messages. And Matthew writes, when he heard what Jesus was doing, when he heard, heard what Jesus was doing, he was still getting news about what Jesus was doing. Then he sent his question to Jesus. The word even permeates prison walls. The word incarnate shines through prison bars and illuminates the darkest of cells. Jan Richardson writes, I think about these things of how John in his confinement refused to stop looking, stop preparing, stop seeing. Even in his enforced and final closure, John persists in turning an eye toward the Messiah, seeks him, inquires after him. When John's disciples return to him with news of the blind who see, the lame who walk, the lepers made whole, he knows, he knows, he recognizes once again and leaps perhaps for joy. Jesus says, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. What Jesus is saying is, go and tell my stories. Go and tell your stories. What your ears have heard. What your eyes have seen. Tell John what I've been doing and let him discern who I am. Go and tell John what only these stories can reveal, what only they can proclaim in their very ordinariness. They, they are no sermon, no slogan, no billboard. They will only be heard and seen in the stories of ordinary people because that's the way Jesus works. Debbie Thomas wonders what version of Jesus would emerge if she took this invitation to heart. And I wonder that too. Who would we hear and see? What signs would we recognize if we really lived out this invitation to hear and to see? Jesus is saying to John and to you and me, to all of us, that he is much more mysterious and other than what was expected as a Messiah. Jesus is saying to John, let go of your preconceived notions of who I am and who I am to be. Jesus is saying to John and to us, I am not going to take up the sword and overthrow Herod. I am truly the Messiah, but I am not that kind of Messiah. 
Jesus is saying to John and to all of us, let go of your expectations for me and see who God has sent you. Hear what God is, has to say to you in the ordinary lives of ordinary people. Hear and see the real me. Where and how might we see God if we looked more in the darkness for the flicker of light, not a blazing bonfire? Where and how might we see Jesus at work in ordinary lives if we heard and saw with holy ears and eyes? Friends, Jesus calls us to hear and see all the stories, the ones with happy endings where the ill are made whole in this life, and also the ones with unhappy endings where justice does not arrive in time. Like John the Baptist sending, beheaded to fulfill the whim of Herod's lover. Jesus says, blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. Offense quits. Offense runs away. Offense gives up. Blessed are they who do not do that, who stick by Jesus through thick and thin, A life of faith is not all roses and cheerfulness. A life of faith is gritty and grisly at times, but that is real faith, something that does not flee at the first sign of difficulties or the 10th or the 20th. A life of joyful faith is not one of sentimentality, or even of cheerfulness, it is something deeper, more profound, that resides in our darkness. It is something John knew well, as he is perhaps ironically the patron saint of spiritual joy. Do you hear that? He's the patron saint of spiritual joy, despite the life he was called to live and the death he was called to die. Spiritual joy is a gift of light in darkness, a gift of simple healing, a gift of abiding faith, no matter what. John the Baptist knew it, and others will know it only if we go out and tell our stories. Go and tell our stories to the world. Let us pray. God of glory, we rejoice in the good news of your promises. Come into our parched world and shower us with your gushing, abundant water of life. Enter into our brokenness and renew us with the strength of your love and the depth of your spiritual joy. Be born anew in our hearts and in our world. Come, Jesus, come. We are ready. Amen.
Let us join together in affirming our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> we give because we need to practice generosity. Let us present the offerings of our life and labor before the Lord.
We pray that with our gifts, as well as our lives, we will tell of those who are given voice, those who are put back on their feet, those who show us the way, and those who offer us grace and hope as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now I send you out into the world in joy to love and to serve the Lord with gladness, to love and to serve the Lord by telling everyone where you see works of Jesus happening in the world today, for they are happening in your life every single day. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace this day and forevermore. Alleluia and amen. <laughs>